My name is Emily Callahan. And I'm Amber Jackson. And today we're going to tell you a story, a story different than the one you think you know about the realities of offshore oil and gas. In California, there are 27 offshore oil and gas platforms. These platforms are made of iron. They just look like big iron giants out there. And all of these platforms have a booming ecosystem that exists below the surface. Our story starts here at the surface, where we see 27 offshore oil and gas platforms off the coast of California. These are massive industrial structures that dot our horizon. And below the surface, they're pumping up oil actively every day. But what happens when the oil well dries up? Enter the engineering feat of a lifetime. Here, the oil companies are faced with removing these structures from the water column, some of them the size of the Empire State Building. It can be technically challenging and costly, as well as environmentally significant when you consider that below the surface, every beam and cross beam is covered in life. Here we see schools of Jack Mackerel. We even see some of our, uh, some of the California state fish the Garibaldi, that nest and make their permanent home here on these structures. Here's a little Garibaldi picture there. And this is when we want to talk about Rigs to Reef. Rigs to Reef offers an alternative to completely removing these structures where an oil company chooses to modify their platform so that it can continue to function as an artificial reef. And there are many different ways to do this. They can tow the reef structure to an area of ecosystem need, they can topple the structure on its side, or they can just remove that upper 80 feet from the water column, which allows for ships to safely draft over them. All of these different decommissioning options allow that infrastructure to remain in the water column and function as an artificial reef. But before we go any further, what exactly is an artificial reef? Well, artificial reefing is not a new concept. It actually began being used in practice about a couple hundred years ago off of Southeast Asia where fishermen would place the structures on the seafloor to observe how the fish would start to be attracted to their nets. Scientists have had their own take on the program by placing reef balls on the seafloor to observe how the life colonizes the structure. And artists, too, have had their own take on the program by placing installations on the seafloor to observe how the life that grows there actually enhances their art. But what makes an oil platform such a good artificial reef? And what makes an oil platform one of the most productive ecosystems on the planet? Well, that has to do with the structure itself. Often stretching as tall as 2,000 feet, these platforms offer a lot of surface area for life to colonize and grow on. Additionally, all the beams and cross beams on the platform create complexity, and complexity creates a healthy artificial reef in which invertebrates can grow on and fish can use all the nooks and crannies of the beams. In California, these platforms actually function in a very unique cycle of life. At the very top here, we have all the mussels and scallops, and when those mussels and scallops die, they fall to the ocean bottom where they create enormous shell mounds. These shell mounds are then used by rockfish who lay their eggs amongst the shells. And when the juveniles hatch, they migrate back up to the top of the platform, creating a very unique circle of life. But how do we know these platforms are actually essential fish habitat? Well, there's a few key questions we need to ask ourselves. 
Are these platforms allowing the fish to spawn and breed? Are they contributing to a healthy ecosystem? Well, before we can answer those questions, we have to answer the age-old question of production versus attraction. Are these platforms merely temporarily providing shelter for these fish, or are they actually producing fish? Turns out we've started to answer this question through stable isotope chemistry, which is essentially a fancy way of saying you are what you eat. We can go into the gut of the fish to observe what it's been eating throughout its lifetime actually originated from the platform itself. In addition to these ecological benefits that Emily just mentioned, there are some pretty substantial economic benefits that come along with the Rig Streif program. Traditionally, when an oil company removes this structure, they have to remove it from the seafloor, and that can be very expensive, up to seven million, if not greater than that. But through the Riggs Reef program, because they're modifying that structure to remain in place, they have a significant cost savings, um, potentially around six million per structure. So you can imagine that the oil companies are pretty incentivized to participate in this program. But they're not the only ones who benefit. Rig Reef program is actually a law, and 50% of any kind of cost savings will go back to the state of California into an endowment for marine preservation and conservation. But this endowment will also cover the costs of annual maintenance, any sort of liability associated with, with a Rig Reef program, and the one-time expense startup. So what we found is that this is a great program to engage and incentivize not only oil companies, but also the state of California. Now we're gonna take you on a little trip around the world because there are oil platforms in every single ocean. So here we see a map of the globe and the red and blue represents oil and gas fields. The yellow represents where we are actively drilling on those fields. And as you can see, it's highly concentrated along the shoreline and offshore. In fact, in every single ocean at this moment, we are drilling for oil and gas offshore. So you would think that a Riggs to Reef program would be something that every country and every ocean would be excited about and excited to have, but that's not the case. In fact, there are only a few places in the world that have a Riggs to Reef program. California, the Gulf of Mexico, and Malaysia. And it's interesting because without this kind of global integration of and global understanding of a Riggs to Reef law, it's difficult to have it fully accepted. But before I get too deep into that, let's take a closer look at California, where we have 27 offshore oil and gas platforms. And back in 2010, our former Governor, Governor Schwarzenegger signed the Riggs to Reef law into practice. But since then, none of those platforms have been reefed. Unlike that, in the Gulf of Mexico, they've been successfully reefing their platforms for over 30 years. In fact, they have somewhere between 500 and 600 reef platforms, some of them incorporated into their national marine sanctuaries and marine parks. Off the coast of South Carolina, a private investor bought one of these structures and turned it into a bed and breakfast, kind of an innovative way to reuse an offshore oil and gas platform. And that idea traveled all the way to Malaysia, where we see an innovation of the Riggs Reef program. Here, they have converted this platform into an eco-dive resort. So not only can people come and stay on it and then dive the reef in the surrounding areas, but it also is an eco-resort. So they are, are sustainable and incorporate the locals into their practice there. Our last stop is going to be off the west coast of Africa in Gabon, where Dr. Enrique Sala, who's a National Geographic explorer, went and dove on some of these platforms. And what he found is that while the areas around the platforms were completely overfished and trawled, these platforms were mini sanctuaries for life. And his research actually got those structures incorporated into Africa's largest marine park. Welcome back from your trip. Now we're going to weigh some of the pros and cons of this program. The first con that we see is the lack of global legislation. For although most countries have their own artificial reef programs, a rigs to reefs program is a different beast entirely. 
you need to take into consideration every unique culture, the unique ecosystems, and the economies of all the, the countries. Additionally, we need to look at our ocean's carrying capacity. At what point do we reef too many structures and it becomes ocean dumping? Well, they started to look at this in the Gulf of Mexico, where they've looked at all of the offshore industry combined. And they found that of all the platforms out there, it only accounted for about 2% of the total hard substrate in the Gulf of Mexico. When you think about all the sedimentation and runoff issues the Gulf is currently experiencing, this program is really more of a band-aid than any sort of solution to the lack of hard substrate. An additional con is the lack of public understanding, which is why Amber and I are here today. We are not save the whales, we're save the oil platforms, which is a little bit of a difficult thing to swallow. But we hope that through research and education and sharing with you all of our videos and photos of these structures, that we can start to bring a better understanding of the actual goals of the program. Another con that we see is the fact that when you reef a platform, you leave it on the ocean bottom. And trawlers are not a fan of this program. And although trawling is like taking a bulldozer the size of a football field across an ocean bottom, it's still an important source of revenue for many countries. And if there's a platform in the way of your trawl, you can no longer have access to those fishing grounds. Now we'll take a look at some of the pros, especially those ecological benefits Emily mentioned at the beginning, and the potential for these platforms to enhance our local fisheries. <coughs> we also see the ability for them to compensate for habitat loss, as we, <coughs> as we, oh my gosh, sorry, I lost my voice here. As we overfish and pollution runoff continues to degrade our near shore systems, what we're finding is that species are moving offshore and making a permanent home on these structures. There are also some of those economic benefits I mentioned and the potential to create an endowment for marine preservation and conservation here in California. We also see this as a potential way to reduce pollution because if we were to remove these structures here in California and bring them on shore to be recycled, the material is, is so massive, like I mentioned the size of the Empire State Building, California actually doesn't have the infrastructure in place to properly recycle that. So what they do is they put it on a barge and send it across the Pacific to be dismantled in Asia. And the second that barge goes outside state waters, it switches from diesel to bunker, bunker fuel. And bunker fuel makes diesel look like champagne. There's just a very significant carbon footprint associated with it. So if we are able to leave these structures in place, repurpose them as reefs, we find it is a good way to reduce our carbon footprint. Now the Rigs to Reef program doesn't necessarily have to apply to just oil platforms. We also see applications with offshore wind. On the East Coast, they're building massive wind farms off of Nantucket, Cape Cod, and Rhode Island. And if you look at this structure, you'll notice that it looks a little bit like an oil platform, albeit the energy produced is much cleaner. General Electric is aware of this, and they actually hired National Geographic photographer David Dubelay to go out there and photograph some of the life that's been thriving on these offshore wind farms. And we hope that after this presentation, you'll no longer look at these structures as just dirty oil or just bird killers, but as potential structures to harbor very unique and special ecosystems. But we encourage you guys to come and follow us here because we are launching a call to action to let our legislators know how we want rigs to reef in California. And this is an opportunity we've partnered with Patagonia to come and let your voice be heard. And if you follow this link here, the link on our Instagram handle, you can come and join us. Thank you. Thank you.